Thanks for coming. Um, we do have members of the public here today, so if they would like to speak as members of the public during this public comment period, they are welcome to. You're also on the agenda, so if you want to just wait till then, that's okay too. Wait till then. Yeah. Okay. Does it, everyone know Susan and Sue? You may not. Molly, you may not know yes. Susan and Sue. Hello. I met you, but I forgot. So you're which one? We're both Susan. Which one is Susan and which one is Sue? I'm Susan and this is Sue. Okay. And what's your last name? Susan Roy. Roy. Okay. And Susan Law and Sue Law. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so, <laughs> so no public comment. Um, we have two sets of minutes to quickly peruse and approve, so if you'd like to take a moment to do that now. Summary of planting priorities for spring 2017. Um, it was my understanding that we came to clear consensus, although we didn't have an actual vote, um, of focusing on the South Street Gateway. 
It's under narrowing of spring priorities. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, I would maybe change that to narrowing of 2017 priorities. And I think that that will encompass both um, spring and fall work. I, I had a change in the same category. Um, uh, under summary of priority sites, uh, it really says that the uh, plantings are uh, rather than random plantings. And at the meeting, I had uh, suggested they weren't random, but they were simply very nuanced. And, uh, and that Rich and I have done a great deal of work. So I'd like to do a question. Where does it say that? Well, under planting priorities, for spring 2017. Mm -hmm. Oh, random, I see where it says, rather than. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 oh. I understand that Lily's comment will say that they're random, but I, at the meeting, suggested that they were carefully thought out and nuanced. And I, see. And I just like my comment to also be reflected. Okay, do you want to suggest language for your, where it says Rob would like, just suggest language that reflects what you said at the meeting. Well, it, it's in response to that, so. It would be underneath, right underneath that. And it was at the same time that you made that comment, I responded to that comment. So do you want to provide language for Terry so it's easy for her to? What would you like to say? Okay, I'm on three. That um, the plantings up till now were not random, but really, but actually just done with a nuanced plan. Plantings today. I'm not random, but I'm not new on this point. Okay, any other corrections to the um, March 15th minutes? Motion to accept as corrected. I make a motion to accept the two. Um, March 15th meeting minutes as accepted. Uh, second, everyone? Oh, you there. Okay. I was there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Step in the big shoes. <laughs> oh, second. We need a second in order to move forward. A lot of pressure. I'll well, one of you has to do it for because we weren't here. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Okay. All righty. Chair report. Uh, Rich and I met with the mayor on Monday. Oh. And Todd, sorry. Rich Todd and I met with the mayor on Monday. I think it went pretty well. Um, I, uh, I provide him a summary of the inventory and the recommendations that have emerged from the Davy plan. Um, and I summarized what our reactions were to it. He, um, his initial reaction was that it appeared to him, and we agreed, that it was um, because it was not a terribly realistic plan, and that's something that we kind of proffered as, you know, from the start, that it would be better to um, now refine the plan and make it uh, realistically reflect what we think we can get done in year one, year two, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's our task. Let's see, what else? about my meet, our meeting. Uh, we talked about uh, possibilities for <clears throat> financing the work, whether that be uh, through operational um, increases or capital uh, camp commitments. And he seemed to encourage us toward uh, the capital line, the stream of revenue, because it's easier, he has more liberty with it. Um, it, it's, it's less likely to compete with other uh, operational priorities in the city, such as, you know, staffing, teaching positions, or, uh, you know, things of that nature. So the difference is 
what do you, uh, capital versus operational? Okay. Yeah, so operation, for example, if we were to hire new staff, yeah. To do to do work on an ongoing basis, that's operational budget. Okay. And capital would be like if we were to contract out work to a, a piece of this to, to you know contract uh, a third party to do it, uh -huh. such as um, high risk tree removal. Uh -huh. um, that is that's capital cost. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, some other outcomes of the meeting were, well, so we went through all of the potential sources we could leverage, and he was, um, you know, he was interested in uh, resources we could leverage, such as volunteers and grant opportunities, um, and he was, uh, he had a lot of questions about our relationship with Tree Northampton, so that's, um, it's great to have you guys around the table, and he, um, you know, he feels like we, we um, could formalize our relationship a little bit more uh, um, concretely and have you guys, and have some kind of way where there's really a clear and continuous line of communication such as one of you always, you know, attending our meeting and having a, a place on our agenda. So, um, hence, your invitation to today's meeting. Uh, and he, let's see what else. I remember. Uh, he would like me to give an update to the council, which I'm going to do at the next council meeting on April 20th, uh, of where we are and, and a summary of the tree inventory. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, Rich and I are also going to be writing an op-ed piece around Labor uh, Arbor Day for the Gazette. And we've already lined that up. And in general, he was, you know, pleased with the work that we do, and um, nothing, nothing in any way uh, alarmed him or discouraged him. I mean, he he like us were, um, you know, were not did not feel that that the that the budget recommendations for the Davy Tree Report were, you know were a reflection of what we're able to do in the timeline, in the time frame we're able to do. So that, that was, again, no surprise. But he clearly wants us to move forward with the work. So. Did you prioritize in any aspects of, of the plan? Yeah, I would say that, I mean, based on Rich's um, comments, it's impossible not to prioritize the high-risk tree room. So he encouraged Rich to make that a priority for 2017. And you know, Rich clarified that he would be reevaluating all of the Davey recommendations in that respect. Okay. Can yep. we talk yes. about that for a minute? Um, well, why don't we, uh, I mean, I'm, I've got five minutes in my chair report. So why don't I just blast through my chair report, and then I think we have a little bit of time uh, for business not anticipated, unless it's a, just a really brief comment. No, it's more questions. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, let's let's save it for a little bit later. In the meeting. Okay. So that was the meeting with the mayor. As I said, I'm going to be um, we're going to be doing a council update and an op-ed piece. Um, I also, in the interim three weeks that we've been away, uh, met with East Hampton City Planner with Molly and a citizen in East Hampton to talk about. Uh, launching a tree program there it's a it would be a very you know they're they're at a very very early stage they're at the kind of like pre-contemplation stage of of making something like this happen and and this the city planner um listened with interest and at the end of it said it's really got to be citizen driven i i need the kind of political backing the city needs the political backing to move forward with this so we hopefully sent them some resources did that end up getting to them karen no Tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So we're going to send them a copy of our uh, the grant proposal and the RFP that we did for the tree inventory. Um, and then, let's see, what else? I just wanted to mention that I'm going to have to be absent at the next um, tree commission meeting, as I had mentioned a couple weeks ago. Th this spring I have conflicts, and I will be missing two meetings this spring, and next week is going to be one of them. Where, where 
the agenda, is there a place to have a question about your meeting with the mayor? Yeah, you know what? If I had um, if I had planned this agenda better, I would have just blocked out some time for it. So um, why don't we? Why don't I? We try to maybe squeeze some of these other. Like we have 20, 20 minutes for a uh, talk with Tree Northampton. If we don't need twenty minutes, let's try to squeeze some time for under any business not anticipated by the chair. Okay. case where the $90 per inch kicks in. That's so correct. we're talking about like $8,500. That's correct. Okay. And they're aware of that? Uh, not yet. They will be <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, would you like to have people there? If people would like to be there, that would be fine. I, I don't have an issue with it. I'm not going to object to it. Um, this is just standard operating procedure in a sense, as long as they agree to the mitigation uh, costs, whether they're uh, he also indicated that they may not have to take all the trees down, but he would like to have them all listed just in case, depending upon what they run into. So I have to send him uh, the mitigation letter, which also will include the uh, tree protection and the tree protection standards for any trees that are in the public library. So what's the address again? Uh, 83 Grove Avenue. It's right across from the Dev Jacobs. So I was going to say, Dev Jacobs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are, the department's in the process of removing the private trees at 122 Federal Street, which some of you may be familiar with, is at the corner of Federal and Milton. So I exercise my authority under the city ordinance uh, dash 285, uh, sorry, 285-29, which allows me as the tree warden to, uh, if there is a, a sidewalk obstruction or hazard to the sidewalk, I can actually, I'm empowered to actually remove that obstruction. The landowner does not um, remediate the problem within 14 days of the letter being sent. I can go in and direct our forces to remove it in the home order, but the property owner gets charged. Um, property owner refuses to pay, then we actually put a lien on his property. I'm sorry, can you? I, I think I missed the beginning part of this. What's obstructing the sidewalk? Uh, there are there's nine trees altogether, there are seven of them that are completely dead. And they're falling in the public right away, or in the public right away. So we, they're at the point where I wouldn't. We have the sidewalk barricaded, also people won't walk underneath it. Oh, I see. And these are private trees. These are private trees. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So it's been a long, 
It's kind of been a long, this has been an ongoing thing for probably the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so we needed to act on it because things were falling out of the sky. And they had large hangers, I mean, like just, mm -hmm. like, it wasn't just hangers. I mean, it was like the tops of some of these trees were just broken mm -hmm. off and hanging there. Wow. So, the giant maples. Yeah. Yeah, they were 35 inch, 20 inch, 19 inch. Some of them were probably bigger, but they rotted, they're, they're rotted so poorly that there's just nothing but a the ball last night. So it'll probably be a two-day process. We started today, we'll probably finish on Friday. So it's supposed to be a great day. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Um, are you starting to think about a timeline for um, for examining all of those trees that are uh, that Davy recommended? It's probably going to take a good part of the summer to do it. So it's going to take me some time. I'm going to dig out a bunch of other things that I have to do, contract things that are not related to trees. Uh -huh. The other part of my job. And that's so. and that, so by the end of the summer, that's just the evaluation part. No, I mean, whatever we find, if we have the time, I will take them down. I mean, that's kind of, that's my goal, is to get a bunch of them evaluated and take them down. So there's at least a week's worth of work for the tree group. But there's also outstanding, a lot of outstanding work orders in the new work, work order system that we owe residents for tree trimmings and possible removals. So I have to kind of balance all that out. We're trying to close out new works. And then, of course, requests come in every day, consistently. So, um, yeah, so that's just a lot of stuff going on. We haven't received a bill yet from, uh, from uh, Davy Resources Group for the Tree Keeper, so the mayor agreed to actually. Uh, for the tree keeper? Yeah. It's there. It is? Mm -hmm. We're in a folder. That's right. You know, so it's cold. It's it's on your desk. It's <laughs> it on my desk. Haven't gotten it. Well, we did get the bill, so we are going to be uh, having Tree Keeper for at least a year. Uh, until um, Unicity gets up and running, and then we can see what kind of communication the two software programs can do for each other. So, it's work in progress. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, I have on the agenda uh, Amy right now, but she's not here yet, so um, this might be a good time to talk about the questions. Okay, Post yeah, Mayor. Yeah, we have four, four. Am I that far ahead? Oh, you know what? Look at what I did here. I have oh. this invisible 15 minutes of time. Oh, wow. All right. All right. Well, well done. I hereby, I hereby <laughs> insert nice um, post postmayor debrief into, I don't know if I'm empowered to do that, but I'm doing it because 15 minutes is not accounted for in this agenda. Okay, so Todd, you want to start off? Well, I guess it, it just got to the last question. Um, where you know those 900 trees that need further inspection seem to me like a fairly significant uh, funnel um, in the in the in the work order process. Is do we have any thoughts as to how we can quicken that pace through perhaps hiring some of that out or additional prioritization that you can maybe take a little bit lesser role in. I mean, I know ultimately you're responsible, um, but 900 sites is a lot of sites on top of, you know, the planting and, uh, and, and the other things that, you know, at least with the mayor, seemed like wanted to go forward at a decent clip. Um, that's a good question. I'm sure you should know it's hire some of the questions that you're gonna pay them. There, there's no money available to hire an outside arborist. I'm aware of, unless the mayor was going for a city council and that's for the transfer. This is an example of like, for example, where we have this, this pot of money for fine material, right? Can, but can, but we can't use can it for anything. Yeah. Capital yeah. Capital so that's capital another capital. example of capital versus operation. Could you remind us the nine hundred are they all under a single priority or are they prioritized? <laughs> are you Amy? I am. Hi Amy, come, on. come and have the seat at the table. We're all families. Are you Lily? Yes, I am. Thanks, Lily. 
other end. So removal, don't forget, that number includes, I believe, 210 stumps. So you gotta uh, take really 210 stumps off of there. Right. And we've already removed the streamers tree, so we've already, you know, you can take basically 211 items off of there. So now we're down below, you know, we're more at the 700 mark. So this high risk 82, moderate risk 373, and low risk 453. Mm -hmm. And then we have the high risk pruning is going to be easy to do because there's really a 15, going 59 trees for high risk pruning. And then that jumps to the number of trees in the cycle of each year, approximately 14 and 68. <coughs> so, you know, if I suppose if the tree crew didn't have anything else to do, in a sense, because we do a lot of support for a lot of different things that are tree related, not just removals, I think, you know, we do probably, the most removals I can remember doing in one year is uh, probably 100, 110. But don't forget that's also because if we have a winter like we had this year, the tree crew is a deer removal, they don't start a lot there. So, yeah, that would be something that we would have to probably examine for the next fiscal year's capital budget. So, in a sense, really, if you were to take the, the bulk of the trees that are, that are low risk are for <coughs> 453 trees. Yeah. So, we can probably, I would say, at least probably do at least 250 trees. I can probably expect all of these this year. And then we just have to take them on a case by case basis. I don't necessarily agree. There's an error factor in these assessments, and I don't necessarily agree with the numbers. And unfortunately, that's you know because every arborist has a different, a little bit different point of view. Even though we actually work with the same set of criteria to do risk assessment in a sense, um, experience plays a big part. It, it does. It does. And like I said, I think these guys walked very fast. They went through the city very quickly. Um, they, we asked them to do a level two assessment, but it's almost in a sense they did a level one, which is like a drive-by. Mm. Drive-by where when they call windshield assessment. Which they didn't, they walked, but. Mm. So I'm, I'm really hesitant to go and just say, we're just gonna cut down all these trees because I think it could create, it could create a lot of, it could create a lot of backlash. So I'm thinking about all the phone calls and yeah. all the all yeah. the stuff that I'm going to end up getting in my office. Why are you taking the street down? There's something wrong with it. Only has a few dead branches, you know. So if I actually go and evaluate them myself and I look at them, then I'm going to be able to answer all those questions. I can't really evaluate a tree from you know from from, from a piece of paper. You physically have to go out and look at it. And then, even though we did pay David to do that, um, just circumventing that one last take a look at it is not, I think. Uh, would be would be would be a detriment to our operation. So of uh, their recommendations for FY 2017, um, what do you feel is realistic? So they have up to I'm just going to say up yep. to for now on up to 83 extreme or high risk removals, yep. 59 high risk prunes, and then um, 373 moderate risk removals. So I mean, and I, the I, would, I would the stump removal. See the stumps. I have a real issue with because every year we've done removals that are trees that are within the public right of way, we go back and remove the stumps every year. So I'm not sure where they're getting the 210 stumps from. But my guess is what they did is they captured stumps that were probably like on a chest of the road, <coughs> places that uh, the stumps were greater than probably 10 inches that are not necessarily, it's not like a, a stump, uh, you know, on, on main or on main road, but actually is a, be a viable site for. So the stumps, I'm not really going to worry about the stumps at the yeah. moment because they're not really going to fall on anybody. Mm -hmm. So it's the other, it's the high risk trees and the moderate risk trees would be my priority to get them looked at. Okay. And then and of course the high risk prunes are also going to be taken care of. Okay. So your goal, just to summarize, is by the end of the summer, let's just say by the end of 2017, you want to evaluate all of the high risks and you want to deal with the ones that you deem are truly high risk. Okay. All right, other questions post meeting with the mayor? Well, my question was just, as a newbie, you guys probably already know this, but in terms of the procedure, you, you talked about, you know, possibly getting funding for this through capital allocation. When does that process happen? When that actual money decision is made? How much money can be spent on this? 
Well, the mayor recommended that, I mean, there are, they've already done the budget for 2017-18, right? That's mm -hmm. FY 2018. Uh, because he's doing it now to be approved by July 1st of June. The capital or the operation? Everything. It's the budget for FY 2018. Yeah, the only way we could get into the FY 18 budget is an operational addition requested through the Department of Public Utilities. But the way we get into the capital budget is FY19, which starts in October this year. The planning the of process, it starts in the process, wow. process, the process of it. Wow. Yeah, wow. and it doesn't actually go into effect until halfway through. Correct. Right. So every, every department so, head actually makes requests based upon the needs of their department that are considered capital items, which are usually uh, items that are uh, over $10,000, a single item or multiple items. And it goes through this whole vetting process, and you actually bring your recommendations to the mayor. And then the mayor, uh, the act, sorry, they go to the capital improvements committee, and then the capital improvements committee has a ranking system. They rank them, and then uh, once the ranking is done, it goes to the mayor's office, and then the mayor they will determine basically which ones get funded based upon the revenue streams that are available to do the work. So it's different if it's general fund money versus enterprise fund. Enterprise fund would be your water, sewer, stormwater. They are easy to fund because of the uh, difference. Uh, there's not really a tax revenue, like there's about two and a half. So the general fund side is limited based on what the city's ability to bond and how much money they can pay back to the, the, the levy, really, what it amounts to. So if we were to have some, so really what we'd have to do is if we wanted to get into the next fiscal year's budget, we'd have to actually have a game plan to put on top of. Donna's desk as director of public works to say that we want X, Y, and Z done next fiscal year and we'd like to have a capital request for the period and then go through the whole process and then it would follow up and follow. But I think even before that, we would probably go back to the mayor with a revised plan for how how to accomplish our goals in five to ten years at, with new numbers because we're, we, we'd most likely need to stretch this out ten years. And then, so we get a we get a feel from him whether or not he's going to put some political weight behind it. And then, you know, so I think I think we'll be constantly checking in with the mayor to see if he feels like we're on the right track. So we don't have any money that's going to be available until 2019. We have a a, a line item for for tree planting and materials that has just been increased from forty to fifty thousand dollars. Oh, okay. So, um, so that's yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a given. Um, and then you have a crew of yep. three full time people. And we have personal services. And you know vehicles and equipment that goes along with that. And that's just part of like the DPW budget. Can the can the money what what can the money for the um, for the uh, remediation be used for? Like if somebody could you know the like on Milton Street, Fire Federal and Milton. That can be used for any any tree related item in the public right away. So it could potentially if there's a big build up, you could use it as uh, um, to subcontract to cut down okay. hazard trees. It would have to probably be transferred to city council to probably have to approve it. Yes. Okay. But I don't think there's really enough in there. I mean, right. It's only eleven, twelve thousand dollars in there at the moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if we were to continue to have public shade tree hearings and people pay the remediation, mm -hmm. which I would I honestly I prefer they don't pay the remediation. I would prefer that they'd actually replant mm -hmm. trees in the public right of way or in that twenty foot setback, mm -hmm. so they actually. So if, if the burden is not on us to actually replant those trees, mm -hmm. the burden is actually put back on the property line. Mm -hmm. It saves us a little extra uh -huh. planting muscle, okay. I guess. So, but uh, I'll take the money too. But I'm just saying I prefer the trees to be in the ground. All right. Any other questions post meeting with the mayor? All right then. We're going to move on to our um, our discussion with Amy, who is Amy K. Lane. The executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association. Do you have that right? That's right. Um, and uh, you know, we have, throughout our now almost two year tenure as a commission, we're a pretty new commission, um, invited lots of um, members of the, members of the public and um, municipal officials who intersect in any way with trees to come and just meet us 
uh, and um, just have a brainstorming conversation about how we can further our goals and maybe mutual goals. Sure. Um, and in, in our case, like in your case, I assume that's like um, economic vibrancy of downtown. Right. right. Okay. So would you, would you first like to just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about Downtown uh, Northampton Association, and then we can sure. go around and introduce ourselves. Well. So I am Amy Kaling. Um, we are, uh, the Downtown Northampton Association is a new organization. It was created in roughly a March, April of last year. Todd is on our board. Um, and we are a, a board of um, roughly 15 people, a mix of business owners, property owners, and Northampton residents who are working to um, strengthen and improve the downtown community and support the downtown community through uh, maintenance and beautification. So we do the hanging baskets, the planters in the islands, those sorts of things, the holiday lights, um, through events like the holiday stroll, through advocacy. Um, if there are issues particular to the downtown community that need addressing with the mayor, we make sure that that downtown community has a voice. Um, and, um, okay, but that, that essentially covers what we do. I did that. Yeah. 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 I heard it. That seemed too easy. Um, <laughs> so we do all of those things with the goal of um, making sure that the downtown or Hampton community continues to be thriving, continues to be attractive for people to go down to, um, continues to have the small, independently owned local businesses that we all know and love, um, and whatever we can do to try and bring that community together um, is, that's our goal and our focus. So, so far I would say with trees, the most overlap that we have had is the holiday lights. Um, this year, I, um, Rich and I worked together to make sure that the way that we hung the holiday lights and the type that we chose to hang and the way that we took them down was in a way that was the least disruptive to the trees. Are they, are they coming off? <laughs> they are not, I thought they were all off until I got a phone call from parking wondering <laughs> where their remaining two meter bags were. And so it turns out, I guess there's um, a small handful of of um, lights that are still on, but okay. they will be off. Great, thank you. They were working on today. Momentarily. They, they yeah. Their schedule, I think, got impacted because the, the, the week or two when they had allotted was when we got that snowstorm yeah. back in mm -hmm. February, and it can't come park his truck with them. So, and I think it just. Great, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I'm curious. Um, sure. A little bit more about you, and that is, um, what is your annual budget, and how do you generate revenue? We, um, our annual budget goal this year is two hundred thousand dollars. We had a budget of roughly one hundred and forty last year. Our uh, money is generated one hundred percent from voluntary contributions. So we have some community partners who make significant investments in us. Um, so the college, Thorns. Uh, TD Bank, and then we have local business owners who, um, in addition to paying us dues, who make contributions. We also are, we assess dues like the Chamber does, but again, it's purely voluntary. It's $200 for first floor Main Street businesses and $100 for any other business. And so those are the ways that we generate income, dues and contributions. All voluntary, nobody is assessed any um, mandatory fee or tax or anything like that. Uh, and by contrast, what had been the annual budget of the bid? Significantly larger, but I don't. I want to say upwards of five hundred thousand dollars. Does that sound? Does that sound way uh, that way? That sounds high. What the budget was and what was actually collected were two yeah. different things, and then okay. the amount that went up for the lawsuit was something entirely different. So. <laughs> okay. I, they had they had a larger budget. I think that's fair to say. Significantly yeah. larger, and um, the benefit of knowing what that budget would be mm -hmm. every year. Right. Whereas we uh, we take a leap of faith every month that we will continue to be able to collect mm -hmm. contributions. Uh -huh. Great. All right. Well, how about we put on the table and introduce ourselves? We'll start with you, Molly. Although Molly is not a commissioner, but she is um, she's a regular I'm a guest. <laughs> regular guests. Regular very guests. important. Um, I work for the State Department of Conservation and Recreation, okay. Urban Community Partnership Program. Uh, my name is Jen Werner. I'm a professional horticulturist and I teach down at Springfield Technical Community College in the Landscape Design and Management Department. And I live in the I'm Jerry and I work in the DPW the clerk. Make Rich. Got it. Hi, Rich. You know me. <laughs> I'm Molly Hale. I'm New on the committee, and um, 
I work as a um, consultant doing projects related to land conservation. And I have some forestry data. Jay Gerard, certified artist and member of the committee. Rob Postal, member of the committee. Oh, my name is Marilyn Castriaga, and I have a recent degree in conservation biology, and I've been working in the environmental field since 2001. And I'm Lily Lombard, and I chair of the committee. I'm Susan Ryan, the member of Tree Northampton, which is a support group that um, helps this committee um, in any way that we can. I'm Sue Lofthouse, and I'm also a tree market, and we're a new citizens organization. Again, collaborate with the commission and the tree board to promote planting and care of trees in North Hampton. Glad to work Okay. So, how can we um, how can we support each other? Do you have any thoughts? Did you come into this meeting with any like, oh, I have this brilliant idea of how we could. Well, plan a few pilot. Not another one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I have one really not brilliant idea, but question about a thing that you already do that would coincide with an event that we're sort of pushing, um, which is really a, a not particularly important or large thing. But so once I'm here, I figured I would bring it up, and that is the the um, day when you all give away. Saplings mm -hmm. yep. Arbor Day happening. The, the mm -hmm. You do it on Arbor Day? Yeah. Okay. Well, we do it the day Arbor before Day. Arbor Day and Arbor Day. So the 28th and 29th this year. Of April. April. Yeah, yes. it's always the last Saturday, I want to say. Friday. 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 Okay, yeah. So it's the 28th, and <coughs> then we do it the Saturday as well. Okay. The downtown community, community is having an, an open house trying to encourage more foot traffic downtown and welcome the spring, and they're doing it on the 22nd which is um, Earth Day, um, in part because they didn't want to compete with extravaganza and the potential traffic from all of that, so they're trying to pick a different weekend. And so, if you didn't have that time with Arbor Day, I was going to see if you wanted to hand some out on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we are planning something on the 22nd, because a lot of us around this table will actually be at the People's Climate March on the weekend of the 29th, and so mm -hmm. we'll probably not be around on the 28th. Um, and so on the 22nd, we had planned to do um, some kind of planting in downtown with the help of Northampton High School Environmental Club volunteers. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if that, we were actually positing the possibility of doing a planting or two in downtown, depending on, you know, what panned out with the high school. And I don't know where we are with that. Richard. I think we're just going to plant the public shade trees on the public property. Right away property. At the in downtown? No, not at downtown. Yep. In downtown. We're gonna plant all five of them. Oh. We're gonna plant them all on on Earth Day. Oh. So there that is a visibility moment. That would yeah. I would I'd be happy to publicize that you were doing that as yeah. part of a reason for people to come downtown and right. see you in action for right. the new trees. Yeah. Can we <laughs> save some whips for that day? Well, I don't know if the whips will have arrived. I mm -hmm. see the trick is the whips um, need to be moist and don't have a long shelf life. They shouldn't have a long shelf life. So when do they come in, Rich? They'll, use, they'll come in the week prior to. So not, not the 22nd. Some may come on a Friday before the 22nd, but they will most likely come in the Monday, Tuesday, yeah. and Wednesday. Yeah. So I don't know if we can really um, promise that. As I recall, having them around too long um, tends to kill them. <laughs> well, and the tie-in with, with um, Arbor Day makes you know, perfect yeah. sense to do it, so I don't, I'm not trying to talk you out of doing that. I'm just, okay. So it was an idea that came up during another meeting we had earlier today, and I figured since I was going to be here anyway, I'm going to throw it out to you and just see what your reaction is. Do you, um, you know, with your ear to the ground, do you hear people at all? Because I was just in Florence Savings Bank the other day on Main Street, right on the corner of Main mm -hmm. Pleasant, and I heard someone say, you know, I grew up in Northampton, and I, you know, I remember down from the town Northampton had, was tree-lined, and, and this was just apropos of me listening in on someone mm -hmm. else's conversation. And so I'm wondering if you ever hear that sort of thing, like people want more trees in downtown. I, I do hear it about the side streets. I don't tend to hear it too much about Main Street, but I have heard um, a 
about like Masonic is mm -hmm. sort of devoid yeah. of greenery. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so I, I hear it about pockets. I haven't heard a complaint about downtown has no, you know, greenery or no trees. Not that broad, but specific pockets. Masonic is the one I heard most recently. Masonic has no trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I have never heard anybody complain about new plantings going in or trees going up. I think that's always a great thing, and I, to the extent that we can help facilitate that, I think yeah. um, the more free the better. But as a broad complaint about downtown, no, I haven't heard. That. Okay. Yeah, that was going to be my question. To what extent do does either the committee or those who you're Conversation with have, have any comments whatsoever about the trees downtown? Yeah, and again, it's really it's focused on specific spots that are really um, lots of blacktop or lots of um, yeah gray sidewalk and nothing really attractive to look at mm -hmm. um, that that people would love if there was the ability right. um, to have more plantings like that around. I'm trying to think of. Another area that's come up for oh the other um, street that we talked about recently was Market Street, um, and we've on our maintenance and beautification committee we we're hoping that we can hang um, hanging baskets down Market Street and it for a variety of reasons isn't going to work, and I've been trying to rack my brain for some other way to get some greenery or floral something down there for spring, and I'm not having any luck so and that also seems like a tough a tough. Um, roadway to area anything mm -hmm. green there but it really that's another pocket that feels to the okay. do you think if um have, have you done any surveys of the businesses uh downtown in terms of what they want or need Cause sometimes people don't say anything not necessarily because they don't see the need but Right. Um, up, but, um, we certainly have sort of surveyed them on lots of things, but not on trees. But I, I'd actually be really curious. I'd be yeah, happy I was to. just wondering like, if, if it was pressed a little bit with more details. If we did a public um, survey shortly after the community commission was formed mm -hmm. and um, made it educational, so when, when people were answering questions, you know, they, they selected from a list and. So I thought that kind of survey might help business owners to realize, oh, trees can increase my business value, or... Well, I have, this is gonna be a, a mm -hmm. dumb question, but I need to educate you out a little bit. If I were a downtown business owner and I looked out my front window and desired a tree, is, the, is there, can you, what is the process for getting trees on Main Street? Do we have, obviously there must be some sort of something for regulation, but how would that? If I opened this door to the businesses and I suddenly got like six businesses saying, oh my gosh, yes, we think we need more trees on this block of Main Street, what would be the steps to make that happen? You could just make a request to the tree work for, for tree planting. I mean, it's obviously if there's empty tree walls, that's really ideal. We really don't have the, we do have the capability of making new are there a lot of empty tree walls down there? Mm, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a few, and there's a few trees that have to be removed. Mm. So we will, yes, so we could. So there's about five less than there used to be Yeah, a year ago. Yep, yeah, we planted, yeah, probably four, <coughs> um, four trees. This is going to be much more educational for me than I think it is for that's all okay. of you. That's, but that's, that's that's um, so if, if I walk downtown today and I find, um, I don't know, six, empty tree wells. When you pull out a tree, do you not automatically put one back if it's like a tree that died? Not necessarily. It depends what kind of stock we have and what's available. So we have, we have not, and we've made Shh. Okay, so but to plant trees downtown, but there's been this um, redesign of Main Street and how, which is actually was done by the Alta Group, that was actually funded through the planning department. Mm -hmm. So we were hesitant in the very first year or two of have this commission being formed to actually start to replant downtown. But I, I believe I'm correct the wrong. The commission kind of said, okay, we we'll just we think we just need to replant downtown. We'll just let we'll let things you know, we can't not plant in downtown because yeah. of some design that's could be fifteen, that could years, be 15 years, years away, ten years away, or it could just never happen. So um, 
I guess I'm trying to imagine a scenario where there's an empty tree well in front of a store and I go in and ask the store owner and they say no, they don't want a tree. Well, like, that, they, I mean, okay, so let me just back up a little bit. You, you know, we do have our sights on those, on those, those various tree wells. There's a complicating piece and that is that they're also known affectionately in the industry of tree coffins because they don't do a terribly jo a good job of sustaining the life of a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're kind of like a potter, you know, a, 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 right. a, pla a planting pot in the ground. They're, there's just not room for the roots to go out. So we would actually love to experiment with something called structural soil, which Jen knows a whole lot about mm -hmm. in her industry, um, which does a whole lot of better job of providing a space for roots to spread. And, but it's a, it's a more costly undertaking, but it means that the tree has a chance of surviving. We have put trees repeatedly in tree wells where they mm -hmm. just died after a couple of years over and over and over again. It's just poor use of our resources. So right. um, one question might be is if there are businesses who, that would might be willing to partner with us to support the, the higher cost of, of a tree planted in structural soil. It involves actually picking up some parts of the sidewalk, replacing the area under that sidewalk with what's called structural soil, and then planting the tree. So you just give the tree more, more room to, for its roots to go. Okay. So I, you know, we're, I don't know that we've got a program completely fleshed out, yeah. but I think that th those are such costly um, plantings that they might, they might really require a public-private partnership. Mm -hmm. and, Yes. Yeah, and we, and we, I don't know if we got all the way, did they, the one in Thorns, was that done with structural soil? No. 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 no they have, they have, you have to have a contract for actually because it's trademark. So I just can't go and buy structural soil and, and no. put it in. So structural soil is like a product that has a warranty period, and if it's okay. not installed by a licensed installer, right. then wow. it's not, Karen, it's not warranted, the tree dies, um, you're going to just... And it can't be it. sitting around, you have to like, okay, we're going to this job That's is correct. order it in you can't yep. sit because it's so, I mean, in, in, separate. In, rea in reality the way the mm -hmm. correct way to do it would be to identify a bunch of sites down mm -hmm. that you know are not going to get disturbed mm -hmm. by any future construction and say we want to contract out with this vendor to install structural soil and plant these types of trees that is, is on the list that we just put together and then it's done and over with and it's under warranty. What are we talking about? I, I have no idea. I'd have to get a cost estimate. I don't know if Molly would have any insight into that and what other communities that have used structural soil. I don't know. I know it's less than silver cells, which can come out to like 10 grand a tree. Um, I know it can be significantly yeah. less than that. But, um, you can write papers over You know, you can pay over it. Yeah, it's essentially you're getting like a recipe for gravel. Yeah, I can think of one business right now that's, I don't know if you've talked to her, Julie Meyer. Um, she's a landscape architect. Um, she, she is the one that does our planters. And she, her office is um, below APE on Main Street. She accesses it from the back. And she and I have talked a lot about the possibility of um, approaching the DPW or the city for uh, rain barrels. And I think she's, um, she wants to do stuff for the town, that's why she did the plantings, and she is the person that immediately left to mind as somebody that I think would be um, into that sort of thing. I don't know if her location, I don't know what it would do for her business, probably not a whole lot, but I think she might be a good person to have a conversation with if you're looking for a public-private partner. Okay, okay. There's an additional um, opportunity for planting. The city will also plant on private property. So, for instance, where the Christian Science Church is, mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. or I think is, or the meeting house, the meeting room. Yeah. They have a lawn. I know there was a big tree there. Uh, the city would be happy to plant that if they could come to an agreement with the owners. So it's, it, it can be not on public property. So, so anyone, yeah, that's cool. you know, anyone who has a place to plant a tree downtown near the right of what, 20 feet from the right of what, mm -hmm. can request a tree. So there, there's real opportunity. And what's the cost to the person doing the requesting? It's no cost. So, so and, and this is an opportunity to get bigger, better trees. So for instance, 
the courthouse, <coughs> the old courthouse, Todd would refer to it more correctly, at, at the corner of Maine and uh, yeah. Masonic, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Maine and Gothic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Re requested a couple of trees. So this spring, mm -hmm. alongside, you'll see a couple of trees going. And so the city will, is providing those trees. They've decided to do that. And mm -hmm. volunteers will plant the trees. There is a request that the, they be watered by the people that are adjacent mm -hmm. or have requested the tree. Um, in the case of, you know, we'll see them. Sometimes it's not a possible water because people don't even have right. access to water. That gets mm -hmm. worked out. Um, do you have like a, a wish list of spaces downtown that are privately owned where you wish there were trees and there's not? We could, I mean, as a committee, we, we can get rich and a list could get to you. Yes. You know, yeah, one I think it would give Rob more joy than you probably put that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it would make me very happy to to help. That work seems on like it. a no brainer. Like that, um, a, with yeah, maybe a couple of caveats, I can think of some property owners that might not be into it, but the vast majority, um, I can't imagine if you went to them and said you could plant a tree on your lawn for free and all you have to do is water it. So, so it's very nice. Amber, Amber Lane. Amber, yeah, the little park. It is, in fact, owned by the city. The property outside their building, mm -hmm. but they were interested in a tree. They came to the city. They're getting a tree this spring. But I think that if you were if you're going to approach businesses with a set, with a, the proposal to do setback plantings, I would also attach the educational piece because you'd be surprised. I have always been blown away every time I face somebody who I think, why well, wouldn't this person want a tree? And they, and they just come up with a litany of reasons why they don't want a tree. And it reflects them not really understanding all of the benefits of trees, including the, the tremendous enhanced foot traffic to streets that have trees. Um, streets that have, you know, in, in, you know in, in retail areas, people frequent, they want to walk, stroll along, and they want to go into the shops of, um, of tree-lined streets so much more sure. than non-tree-lined streets. But, but you know, for us, it's kind of like a no-brainer, and we've connected the dots. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, it's, it's just, just not. it's just not there. So um, let's make sure that we also get you some of the data, the research that demonstrates sure. the, the increased economic vibrancy that goes with sure. street streets. Yeah. One suggestion, obviously. And then I just want to let you know, guys, we got to wrap this up. We're, we're starting to get off, so I'm going to take a comment from Jen, oh, a okay. comment from Marilyn, and then we're going to let me give, give you my email. And if you sure. email me, I can send you a PDF of information about structural soils. So you okay. can just, you know, there's some booklets. It was embedded at Cornell. Okay. And also, I can send you a statistic sheet for, like, I'll take you know, what benefits, okay. like, uh, the loose Sure. What's your email and I'll write it down right uh, J A yeah. Werner W E R N E R at S T C C dot E D U. Got it. May take a few days. And your name is Jen. Jen. J E N Werner. Thank you. Yeah. Pardon? Oh, I can send you one. Oh, that would be real good. Yeah. Very good. good. And one quick suggestion I had, just in terms of you know making a, a fun little. Um, business promoting project would be, let's just say you identified 10 businesses and 10 sites, mm -hmm. um, you know, create a little brochure all about partnership, the partnership between downtown businesses and the city, partnerships between, you know, businesses and places that have trees. You, know, you, you could have a photo of the 10 newly planted trees and information about the structural soil and, and how just, you know, businesses benefit from tree lines, city uh, streets, mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of ways and you know those could be like on a register and you know just like something visible and tangible like oh look at that. Right, absolutely. Okay, last comment and then we're going to wrap this up. Well I also think to not give up on the streets that don't have trees, uh, but the only way we get them is by making a tree well and probably using structural soil. So I would be interested in a general idea of the amount of money that it would take to create a new tree well uh, and with structural soil, just to be able to give that to potential business, say we can do some sort of, you know, 75, 20. There are some other constraints, like you still have the, you still have to comply with ADA standards. So some of those really narrow sidewalks where the business is right up against the sidewalk, you're never going to put a tree there. So, like I think of Masonic Street, and I just think I don't, I'm actually not sure any trees could could physically go and most of the. Plenty of room in front of uh, Star. 
Okay. Well, there might be some areas. We're going to cross the street across the city parking. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's that's a fine suggestion is to work off an estimate. Just, I mean, not finding yeah. it, but just give us a sense. An idea, because I can think of three off the top of my head, people right. with property or businesses on the Sonic that would be, I would think, open to trees and a cost sharing. Okay. Great. Green River Festival. Jen, it was lovely meeting you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Great to meet you too. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. Keep our lines sending me off with um, um, all this new information. Good. And I'll be in touch. Great, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, where are we? Oh, okay. So we are electing officers for 2017. Uh, and this is great because we're all here. So I, I kept I kept postponing it because we barely had a quorum the last couple of meetings. So here we are. Uh, we need to elect a chair and vice chair, right? We don't have any other positions as far as I, I know. So I am going to open the floor to nominations for chair. I nominate Lily for chair. Second. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? Discussion? I think Lily has done a great job here in our community the past couple of years, and I support her renomination. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready to vote? Does anyone else have anything to discuss? Move the question. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. We have a chair for 2017. Thank you. Thank you for renewing your custody. I will try not to let you down. <laughs> all right. So for vice chair, do we have nominations for vice chair? I nominate Todd for continuing. I second the motion. Any Is there anybody else who would like to do it, who would like to be nominated? Does <laughs> Todd want to be nominated? <laughs> uh, I'll accept that. Thank okay. you. Okay, any other nominations? No? Discussion? I continue to like the role that Todd plays in um, holding the big picture, thinking about how we need to uh, codify the work we do. So I, I continue to enjoy working. Uh, all right, so we have, a, uh, we have a motion, we have a second, we have a discussion. Now, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That was easy. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, I, in discussion with Rich, um, uh, I put on the agenda for today's meeting a reiteration of our 2017 Plant, tree planting and aftercare goals. Um, keeping in mind what our capacity is and what our priorities are. And I tried to break these down into four bullet points. What are the maximum number of trees we think we can plant? The maximum number of trees we think we can water? The ratio of plantings, right of way plantings versus setback plantings? And let's see what else do I have? Oh, I added to this and this was um, kind of my own doing, is uh, I would really love for us to clarify for future setback plantings what we are asking in terms of ob uh, obligation for water in the trees. And I say, I put obligations in kind of quotes because obviously we're not going to arrest anyone who doesn't water their tree on a weekly basis. But we could self, we could create some self-selection by making it clear that watering is an expectation for setback planting. So 
let's start with the first one. And I'm actually going to just um, defer to Rich on this because the first two really, because I feel like most of this is about the capacity of his department and tree crew. And, um, and I, I feel like you have had given this some thought and come up with some numbers. So I, I, I'd love to hear from you first. So given, so obviously as we all know, Davy Tree I think recommended that we plant at least 404 trees a year within our five year time frame to get us back up to our, back up to speed. Um, that's obviously not realistic. It's not supportable. Um, and after having a long conversation with Alan Snow, who's a tree warden in Amherst, uh, you know, Alan also expressed his own um, struggles with trying to plant, I think it was 2,000 trees in three, three years. So he is uh, 200. He said, you know, you're really better off to not overshoot yourself. He said 200 would be, was 200 to 250 is what they were able to accomplish. And that's with using their own forces, um, their, uh, their own Amherst uh, Tree Committee and Stockbridge interns, which they didn't have any this year. They, had a, they didn't have luck getting any this year or something like that. So that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, but he didn't get the interns that he was yeah. uh, hoping to get that actually were helping. There were actually Stockbridge students that actually were trained in agriculture that actually could you know, go to a tree, do a tree train, uh, water the tree, and move on to the next one. They're actually employees of the town. So, I mean, and, I, and also based upon what we've been doing the last few years, um, we've been ordering on average about 180 trees the last couple of years. And given everything else that we have to do, including the water, I, my cutoff number is between 200 and 250. And the reason I'm giving it a little bit of a, I originally settled for 200, but then I said 250. The reason I'm actually giving it a little breathing room is because I think that we have to have a little breathing room for uh, setback plantings. So my, the ratio of setback plantings in my mind should be like 60, 60% in the public right away, 40% of setback plantings. But we also need to have that 40% of setbacks actually be kind of fluid for the, for the pure reason that if I think if I'm, I'm a firm believer in setback plantings, that if folks actually request trees especially in locations where we can't plant a public shade tree, we've got to make every effort to try to plant those trees. Even though they are in different places in the city, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that takes away from any kind of uh, gateway plans that we want to do or any planting plans. So I think as a commission, uh, we have to make sure that every year we set priorities for actually a planting project that we want to do, to tackle that project. And then that would be a project that's in the public right of way while still um, providing setback plantings for residents, and that's a kind of a fluid number. You know, you, you, you could have 20 in one year, you could have 80 the next year. You have to sign up to it's all dependent upon, it's all really dependent upon how we go about obtaining setback plantings. You, you know, presently the way we're doing it, obviously everyone knows is that Rob does a gazillion site visits with folks, he, and he, he, he works, he spends time with Tree Northampton. As Tree Northampton gets up to speed, which I think we'll talk about later on, because we also I also met with them, that once they get up to speed and they actually have um, a larger board or a completed board, and they actually have a really like a core base of volunteers that, that stay with Tree Northampton for multiple years, there's there's a resource where we could actually possibly increase the amount of trees we plant, and we could possibly utilize them for some aftercare planting, which is part of our struggle. So, <coughs> 200 to 250 is kind of where I'm thinking, and I don't want to go much higher than that. So we have trees from last year that we already own that are in Amherst that are at, I think Rob was 110. We have 110 yep. trees that we own, plus we are talking about possibly buying another 100 to 180, which was the original tree uh, order that we had that we haven't put in yet. But that would be that would be it for this year. We would, we would plant what we own, and we actually have, let's say, say we get another 100 trees, that would be it. And the next fall, uh, as a commission, you would decide where you would like to have another planting project. And then we'd actually basically put the cart before the horse, because I think, the, I mean, uh, the horse before the cart, <laughs> We're doing it the other way. We got the cart before the horse right now. It works, but it's kind of, 
it's a little jumbled and it's uh, can be confusing and it's also dependent upon like I said you know this is year three year three or year two we're almost, we're almost complete with um, year, two. year two so in year two you know we've done a tremendous amount of work but I think that we, we need to get our planting priorities really set in the fall so we can actually have, have the places identified we want to plant the trees whatever project the commission picks we'll have the setback plantings identified and then we go after the nursery stock because that's really the driving force you're not going to get the nursery stock you want you may get some of it you may not get any of it it, it depends on the quality it depends on who plants it you know ball and burlap i don't expect to have three people who are and i'm going to say mid 50s because i'm 50. um wrestling a giant ball and burlap in the hole it's much easier to use a, a grow bag tree so all those things are factored into and then the aftercare is the other factor is how we go about the aftercare and is it used, is it paid staff, which presently it's probably going to be paid staff for this year. Um, and the Street Northampton with its volunteer efforts in the future actually kind of supplement some of that for us. That's to be seen until we get that all squared away. So you mentioned 200 to 250 maximum you feel like we could plant in 2017. Yeah. What about watering? What's the maximum you feel like you can water? I don't, honestly, I don't think watering, we don't really have a choice. And, and I, and I but say, you, and I you say, reach a maximum well, we, of what we, you can we, do. Well, we reach a maximum, but the, operationally speaking, if I have to, I take people from other places to water. And that's what I did last year. Yep. So or, op operationally, I took people from, <laughs> this is recorded, but the sewer drain division because, you know, it was a rainy day, we came to construction, and they went out and they actually watered. Even though it was raining, we still needed to fill the water back. So mm -hmm. operationally, I think they're, if we're going to commit to planting the 200 trees, Hopefully the, the trees that we watered last year that were three or four years old will be able to actually hold their own and we won't have to water them so they get ticked off the list and then we just keep adding new trees that are, that are two years, three years old in the field. It, it's, it's a gamble, um, but gambles and risks are what make life kind of exciting. Part of also, so I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, it's operation, I'm an operations person, so it's almost like in a sense, Part of, part of your plan also is to plant a large number in the fall as opposed to spring so you don't have to carry them through the summer. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have the ability to actually uh, capture, the, you know, plant bare root trees, which I think I'd like to experiment with again, um, even though we weren't completely successful uh, doing it in the spring. I think fall planting um, would be would be great in doing bare root trees. And I think Rob, you know, Rob's obviously correct, depending upon hopefully the weather is you know, is in our favor and we, we don't have to water as much as we did last year. Last year was an extremely difficult season, but we're also going to see some mortality from the last two years. So we have to take that into consideration. So some of these young trees uh, won't have made it through the winter. So they will be ticked off the list as well. But I, I think for this year, sustainable, I think I, based upon the projections of the staff that I'm going to have uh, available to me, I think we'll be able to water everything. This, this year, because the budget's set in stone, and I have uh, eight uh, seasonal labor positions that are available uh, in different divisions, and then I have uh, two other uh, new full-time staff positions, potentially if the council includes in there as budget. So we're, I think we're gonna be okay, but I think going over that 250 mark is really, really important. Okay. In my opinion, I'm sorry that's a very long conversation, but that's, that's my thought process. Okay. And um, how did you come up with the, your thoughts about a ratio between uh, of 60% right of way and 40% setback? Um, my, my ratio really really is based upon 100. It's easy. It's an easy <laughs> figure. But other than that, there, my, my, my theory is, is that we have, you know, this report that identifies 2,000 planting locations and then whatever trees were removed and trying to make sites and those stumps as well. So I think that we need to actually concentrate on planting more trees in the public right away um, and by doing this we're going to be doing different planting plans so my my kind of vision is, is that if, the, if the commission selects a planting plan you're, you're not you're not unless I'm correct you're not going to pick a setback planting plan setback plantings unless there's like a street that you can populate on both sides with setbacks and you go around and you knock on one store that's a planting plan Right now, we're not doing it that way. We're setting a planting plan in locations that the tree warden has control over, or the city has control over, and then we are spot planting, setback plantings. 
And so my thinking is, is that we should concentrate on planting more trees in the public right of way in the sites based upon the available nursery stock. What's, what's available? Well, we have to pick the places and find the, find the correct nursery stock for those places and plant them. Because in reality, I mean, so then I'm doing a little research as well with, uh, go ahead. Um, I just, this is not judgment. Mm -hmm. um, this is just observation. So the observation of um, planting 40% of in a given year of our trees in the non right of way means that we are delaying by 40% the this because this only deals with right of way and that's that's a choice we can make but I'm just making that observation is that you know in any given year we're only doing 60% of right of way trees so you know it, it's just gonna push back the timeline of that and that's well, like I said it's fluid it's fluid so okay. you could have a year where we don't do a lot of setback plantings and 70 to 75 percent of the trees we plant are in the public right away it depends upon what the Commission picks for a project yeah so the, you know if you pick a project that's going to require 110 trees whether it's a couple of different gateways or whether it's a couple of different neighborhoods and we only have 200 trees available well the majority of the trees in the, front of the, in the public right away um, and I, I hear what you're saying, and I also think that part of the fluidity, the fluidity of that number is also the ability to actually continue having volunteers through the Tree Northampton planting the setback trees. Because as we know, if you have a, a core group of volunteers that actually run Tree Northampton, you're going to have volunteers kind of move in and move out. So in any given year, you may have you may not have enough volunteer staff. I don't think that's going to happen here, but that number has to be fluid. So I'm not necessarily married to that number. It was just an easy split, um, given what we're trying to accomplish this year on South Street. So that was that's my thinking. Um, I want to hear from other people. I do have another um, reaction, but I'm sure. happy to hear from other people about reactions to Rich's suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think it makes sense. Generally, I think the number 40% is roughly 100 trees, right, for the for the setbacks. Be less than that. Yeah, more like 80. 80, 80, 80 yeah. Um, what I'd be interested in is like, you know, we we're not going to do a, a PR necessarily on the plan, um, but I do think announcing the the planting plan and saying you know 150 trees are going to be planted in the right of way and we're going to make a, a special push on south street here's a before and after rendering maybe we have some landscape architects in our midst who could possibly could do something but, um I don't, something like that i think you know showing a before and after type of approach um and then you know you mentioned you were going to focus on the downtown coming up you know in that uh you know get all the vacant sites filled in so I think that would be a, a good piece and then say, oh, and in addition, there's another 80 trees set aside for setback plantings, if interested, go here, blah, blah, blah. And I think that, that could really generate a lot of kind of upfront interest and um, then we can get a better sense of what we're looking at for the year and, then, and the year beyond that and use that to then put together our, our budget requests for uh, FY18. I just want to say that the, like, up till now, I think and things can change that the setback planting program is what holds the volunteers together keeps them interested uh, recruits new volunteers involves the public so I think if you wither the at any one point the setback program uh, that it will do harm to the volunteer program and the public employment, uh, public engagement to the program so you know that would be a choice but I think it would be so I like the 60-40, I think that's very reasonable, but, um, yeah. I, but you I, can go higher if uh, yeah, the yeah. volunteer program gets. I don't know why, I mean, as a volunteer, I would be just as happy to plant a tree in a public right of way as in, as yeah. in someone's lawn. So I'm not really understanding that logic. I, I think that, um, I mean, I'll, I'll be really, like, very simple and straightforward about South Street, say. So I've planted trees on South Street, we've been out there. When you're out there, you're planting a tree in, in the public way, which is very well-meaning. But their cars are going by, it's hard to even talk to other people. You're not necessarily meeting the homeowners. When we go into a neighborhood, people from all over the neighborhood come out, talk. They've spoken to Rich, I've 
okay, I've seen them come out, they talk to everybody, you meet the neighbors, they've requested the tree off and they help. It's a little bit of a party each time, instead of kind of digging along the road, the highway. So there's, there's a really large qualitative difference between the two, and people respond to that. And, and, uh, and I've been out there planting now, this has been my fifth year, and uh, that's what I've learned. And so, five, you know, it's four years of experience this topic. You know, setback planting and, and on the roadway planting. So I'm certain of myself here. I think I, I, you know, last spring when we did the Arbor Day plantings along Prospect Street and along, what was it? Near, near the Montessori School. Anyway, we were. Bates. What's yeah, Bates. Tons of positive feedback. So I really think that volunteers will come out to plan um, in any way that will enhance the public, um, the public right of way. So I, I you know, you I, know I, we just have a difference of opinion. We have a difference of opinion. I do want to point out that I've been working with the volunteers directly for four years now. That I spend days and days and days doing it. So I think that people should hear it, that there's some weight to that view. Um, and you have to see it become a larger percentage. The volunteer group gets going strong and is able to do that. I'd like to see them take more of that responsibility. We, we would like to. We want to grow stronger and do more. I mean, that, it is our goal. I'm just saying that we need certain conditions in order to do that. It might. Show me the money. Well, I, I think the percentage can grow, but I think to go too much beyond that would be not necessarily in the best interest of the, the public funds that are you know, set aside for this. So I think that the you know private fundraising would have to also be elevated to in order to accommodate an increase in percentage. You know, certainly past a, a majority point. Money, money that's recouped from taking from tree removals. No, private fundraising. Yeah, in my opinion. I, I do want to reiterate that, and it's been, I said it before at the meeting, is that in terms of city expenditure, a setback planning is potentially a great savings, and that potentially the tree, there's some just lack of clarity here, the tree becomes owned by the property owner, and, and that the long-term care of the tree is one of the most expensive aspects of the tree. And those trees, that are setback trees, often give the greatest uh, return to the community and that we can plant large trees that will be there for a long time. Whereas when we plant a tree in the tree belt, it's a, often a much smaller tree and a tree that may not have as long a life. So uh, there's the, 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 the investment I think is what very well made. Mm -hmm. I think they're both valuable. So I'm not feeling like I need to choose one over the other. And I'm feeling like we could excite volunteers about planting on either. And I would like for us to make sure that we message to volunteers that both types of planting are really valuable and encouraged. Because I, you know, I just don't, I feel like we're creating this false choice here. We don't have to choose. Um, they're both valuable and they're both, um, I think they both forward the public good. Um, all right, so just to summarize, um, 200 to 250 trees. Uh, sounds like Rich is not concerned about the maximum number of trees to water in a given year. Um, that you'll uh, this, this, this this coming fiscal year. This coming fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. So to be reevaluated maybe at the end of the uh, year. Yeah, it needs to be reevaluated, and it's also as as we start to gear up and work with Tree Northampton, um, it would be nice to have the ability to maybe have some volunteers take some of the pressure off the DPW. At this point, but I'd, after talking with you, and they can speak for themselves, obviously. But I think they're going to be more of it's going to be more of a um, upfront work, which would be plant, you know, planting the tree with volunteers and doing actual um, uh, leader training things of that nature. So the aftercare of the tree you know, at this particular time is going to have to fall back onto the Department of Public Works, and that includes setback planting trees as well. We're not going to not water a setback tree. Okay. I'm not going to drive by a street tree and say. It was a tree with a bag on it, but it's on something's lawn. I'm not going to water it. It's not going to happen. We're going to water it. Okay. Because we do own the trees. Um, but do we want to engage, do we want to prioritize those people who are, who at least express 
that they're willing to water a well, tree? Well, I think that's one of the things that Rob has been driving at in a sense is having that public engagement. You know, when you, when you do a set, when I, all the years I've worked here, you pull up to a site, I pick a site, before we even had a tree commission, I decided to plant shade trees, that's the park's warming. I pull up to a place, a superintendent says, plant a tree here. We plant the tree there, and then we would walk away. We wouldn't talk to the homeowners, we wouldn't do anything. The one thing the setback planning program affords is an actual physical uh, verbal bond right from the very beginning. Um, and so I think that is really the key to actually getting people to water the trees. Um, unfortunately, the law is a little fuzzy, and I'm actually asking for some clarification from Alan Seawall because we're using documents that say within two years' time, um, this tree actually belongs to you. Well, in reality, the law doesn't say that. The law says it's a public shade tree that's on or within the public right-of-way, including trees that are covered under Section 7. Trees under Section 7 are setback planning. <coughs> So I need to find all that out. So I I, I, uh, I would agree. I think we need to actually just reach out to folks and say, you know, you requested this tree. It costs how many dollars a year to water it? Are you committed to watering it? If you're not going to commit to watering it, then, you know, why? Why aren't you? You're asking for the tree, but in order for the aftercare, you have to water it. Well, I don't want to pay for it. You know, so, that, I mean, there's going to be a myriad of things. But I think having that communication with the individuals prior to that, which we normally don't do with, if we decide to. So we're not gonna communicate all the residents around South Street where we're gonna plant these trees. We're just gonna start planting them. And we're responsible for water. If they come out and say, hey, this is great, or if you use the listserv, I think, that you have for the South Street neighborhood, you know, we may be able to capture folks and say, yeah, I'll water that tree. But from a you know, practical point of view, you got a row of 50 trees and one person watering Two of them, and then another person to it. That, that's awesome. We just keep it on the list, and we just go by. Right. That's all. Right. You still but, keep it on the list. Yep. It doesn't go off the list, but we keep it on the list. If the water backs will we'll just move on. We have a, uh, a woman that lives on Bridge Road that's watered her trees religiously for the last four years. We haven't had a touch. And every time I go by, the water backs are full. Mm -hmm. Surprising, not swimming. But I mean, they're, you know, I mean, it, it's so it, they're they are out there. But I think it's again reiterating strongly. I think we should put on water backs all of those tags that we bought regardless of whether or not we have yeah. drought. It's just another step, another way of and, communicating with folks. And, and the lawn the signs tree. that we create, could they also say, you know, have some messaging around watering? I, I, had, I had suggested some language. I, I, and I forwarded that to, okay. to, uh, to Tree Northampton. I, I don't know Which I want to make sure I give them yeah, time so to, to talk, so. Talk. Um, all right, so this might be a good segue then. Uh, uh, so we're, I think we're, we're done with that segment and we have some clear ideas about what two, 2017 priorities and capacity are for tree planting and water. Thank you. Tree Northampton. Thank right. you for inviting us. You're welcome. We are thrilled to be here. That's right. Sue is going to speak. Okay. Okay. As you know, we are, um, it's been less than a year. We started having meetings last fall that some folks were interested in getting involved with trees as private citizens and um, organizing volunteer fellow volunteers to help with um, raising awareness and education and care, planting and care of trees in Northampton in collaboration with the commission. And um, so a little bit of an update here. We did meet with Rich, which he, he mentioned, about spring activities. We talked about the Arbor Day displays. Um, we have a schedule. Marilyn um, graciously passed on contacts for people who had done it last year, previous year. So we filled in the schedule with volunteers who've done it before. And then um, after inviting all of them back, we expanded out to other volunteers who've been planting and pruning and um, over the past few years. So. We filled that up, so we'll have tree, tree Northampton people there throughout the Friday and Saturday hours, as well as other <coughs> folks um, throughout getting out the whips. And we'll have a Tree Northampton table. We have a little banner, and we have um, postcards we made last year, which we'll have available. On one side, it talks about volunteer opportunities, and the other side, it talks about the setback program. It all directs to 
the Tree Northampton website, which is also you know, directs back to the commission and, um, and tree work. So we talked about those displays and staffing and some little details, like tables, things like that. Um, we also talked about putting together a spring tree leader training. So we'll be reaching out to Jay and Rich for scheduling to bring volunteers together and work towards what is probably our largest challenge is creating a very strong core of volunteers who have training and expertise and leadership skills. So going through these trainings and learning proper tree planting. Um, we did have one, as you may recall, in the fall for pruning to get people up to speed. Groups have been going out with a leader who really has um, the technical background and um, accompanied by one or two people who maybe don't have as much technical background but who attended a training and understand safety concerns and are learning alongside. And as one of the people who's been going along, it's just tremendous. It's learning so quickly and so much. It's really eye-opening when I look at Teresa now. I'm like, Oop, that, that's wrong. And so it's really great and it's exciting. And I think that that education, the educational opportunities are really key to energizing volunteers, um, myself um, as an example. So um, we talked about having a spring leader training, um, much as we had in the fall, where we invite people who've been helping and they get some education and hopefully bring them on a path where they could begin to be with a less experienced volunteer and not skip any steps and properly plant a tree, maybe with a far more experienced person in the vicinity as a resource and for making sure that we do the very best job as possible. Planting trees and, letting, and helping them live. Um, we did talk about ideas for tree watering. One of our um, members, Jonathan, had done some testing last year of equipment and vehicle, a vehicle and equipment for um, how many gallons of water and trees could be watered in how much time and what specifications of equipment might work to try to figure out a way to engage volunteers in actually watering trees. So he worked on that a little bit. Rich had some very specific ideas too about how that might work, putting a rig in um, private truck and seeing how we could do maybe serve some of the trees and start it off slow in a measured way and see if that's a viable way because that if we increase the watering capacity we could increase the, the number of trees we could plant um, so we are that is a priority to think about that and look into it um, I ran an email by Rich that we worked on um, intended to the setback recipients from last year. So people who had a setback tree planted, we um, are maintaining the data on their names and their emails and communicated in the fall about water bags and some other things. And now this spring, I think in the next day or two, we'll send this out. I had Rich look at it to see what he thought. He had a little bit of feedback. Um, had some other people, Susan as our arborist, and, um, looking at what it should say, telling them how to take care of their trees, and telling them to water their trees too. So hopefully work with them on keeping channels of communication open and try to see if they can you know, do a good job of taking care of these trees with our support. So we went over that. We also talked with Molly um, and talked about, um, we, of course now we Obtained certification from the Commonwealth as a non-for-profit and we'll be looking towards the, um, the federal government to get a tax-free status. But in the meantime, we need to come up with a more concrete business plan than we've had since we joined together in the fall. So we're looking for other groups that maybe have some planning documents for administration and um, funding development and put together plans so that we're in a better position to go out and talk to community leaders to bring more people in as advisory 
board and to help us build a good foundation and stay within, um, make sure we're in compliance with um, laws and, and protecting ourselves as well legally. Um, Molly talked to us about some different organizations in the area. We had already reached out to some of them. Um, one of the things that really struck us a lot was this idea of the neighborhood model. And Molly mentioned after having interned at working at KC3 and how this idea of community involvement and ownership and having neighborhoods work with, with us and with the city to take on responsibility for trees, certainly the setback trees, but also um, right away trees, getting people involved and building a culture where people really care and they're aware of their trees and their surrounding and more connected with their surroundings through that relationship with their trees. So um, that was really great to hear how some other groups have done it and we're gonna be reaching out to um, Holyoke and um, of course the Wooster Group and um, looking at that as a really good way to is our mission of awareness and education through volunteer participation. So um, that was great. Thank you again, Molly. And we're getting ready for Arbor Day. And um, we're also connecting with um, an attorney here in town who currently has a passion for trees, is willing to meet with us and talk to us a little bit. We're gearing up for some web updates. There were a lot of setback trees that went in last year. And Alicia, who's not here, is does the web. And um, she's gonna be going out and taking more pictures. A lot of photos are up. I think there are about 40 photos in our photo gallery on the web. And um, that will be expanded. Um, we also wanna do some, we have some pictures we wanna get up before and after pruning. Um, that's a sort of side thing. Um, Rob has had some conversations and I'm starting to get involved in talking to the people at the community garden about some plots available for putting in very small trees and um, with their help they would be, they are interested, they have discussed and made the decision that they would be interested in help in caring for the trees if we could get them in there. So we would have some stock there, which possibly in bags. It's the, the, um, the traditional community garden. Oh, no. the one, the yeah. one, the the one, one on the uh, Yeah, there's some people who are interested in, so we could get, we think we have the capacity to get them in um, a few plots, and then there would be some trees, and they would they would be willing to water. Um, again, the bag trees, from what Rich is talking about with volunteers, um, it does limit the kinds of stock available. When volunteers can't necessarily work with um, the burlap wrapped trees, and um, so that's kind of an interesting thing we're looking into that they have that interest and they are willing to commit to helping out because they care about trees. I would That's check cool. in with the community garden organizer. I can put you in touch with her because I'm pretty sure that they don't allow trees in plots at the community garden because they had people, they had trees get out of control and then start to shade other plots. And so I'm pretty sure that there's a policy at that community garden where trees are not allowed in plots. Okay, I'm a little late on the conversation, but I understand that the governing body of the community garden made a decision at their last meeting to support this effort in these particular wow, plots. that's great. And to take okay. on responsibility for them. True. So they'd yeah. be temporary, yeah. they'd be, tempor they'd be, be temporary. harvested and then yeah. planted. Well, well, they understand they'll be in tree bags. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. are getting the tree bags by peeling them right. off the bags that we're getting from Atlas Nursery. So we have 50 tree bags that we can pay for. It's the surplus property, we have to <laughs> we got to auction that idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as I discussed with Rich and Molly, you know, there's lots of ideas, and I talk to friends and family and neighbors, and people have all kinds of ideas. So I think it's really a priority to, to get some planning documents and to have, mm -hmm. you know, these are our priorities um, as we have from the get go. Our priorities were getting volunteers for plantings in the fall, getting the training, and getting the. Um, working on setback program. So we feel like we did a good job with that and we want to keep our our goals manageable and obtainable and measurable going forward. So can, can I also mention, yes. uh, I mean, structurally, 
we've elected officers and we have an address, which is my house. And uh, ready for the credit card offers. <laughs> They're I already in. got some. They're rolling in. <laughs> so I know we're good with the state. And uh, so we're hoping to get our federal 501c3 done. We, we have a treasurer. Has, has the bank account been done? Alicia got snowed out the day oh, we were going to yeah, open it. So yeah, this we're week we'll get that open. Opening an account. So within a year, we should be able to start fundraising, should that be necessary, or accepting money, and just have the, you know, the structure in place to function in that way. Uh, we've had a few people ask us if we could take donations, and we've been very hesitant to take money, but we have a little bit of seed money to open a bank account. Well, and also, yeah, that's, it's going to cost money to get your 501c3 filed. I said, well, like $800 to uh, do the paperwork. But we'll have to in the pipeline. You can take money, it's just not a tax. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, some people argue is a good thing, people giving altruistically. But um, our most important goal is to you know get some planning documents and get, expand our inner core of people involved who can commit and um, who want to make time and then have it's these leadership groups. So. Right. And I think we, we especially want to talk to one Andrew Smith about his bicycle watering program in Holyoke, which Molly told us about, where uh, they evidently have folks who go around Holyoke and get permission to use hoses at, at households mm -hmm. and they'll get someone who will bicycle the house, use the hose, fill a water bag, and, and do a route, which I think is something we could, should we be able to you know, get that going, I think that would be a real help. Um, as much the as the, the truck would yeah, be great. The trailer, they got a little grant to Yeah, they got, a, they got the some money to buy a rig and, and cool. get on the stick. I think that might work well for us. And I must be him signed up to help at Arbor Day, Andrew Smith's on the volunteer schedule. Wow, well, cool. We'll have to pick his brain while we're yeah. sitting out there. In fact, um, we saw it as a great opportunity to, to be recruiting volunteers for this because it is a great a chance to talk to people and get a feel for them. And Yeah, we continue. We had a tabling at the beginning of March. Um, at the Northampton win Winter Market and spoke with a number of people and got a few volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. And w we try and have a public presence in that manner. And we continue to refresh, refresh uh, both the website, as you said, and our Facebook page and uh, uh, try and have something of a presence in different formats. So we're, we're growing, you know. All right, any um, very brief questions before uh, you guys last mentioned Arbor Day, and that's a good segue. I want to make sure we have a few minutes to talk about Arbor Day, but any... Did you say you were looking for ideas of um, other groups, similar nonprofits, and how they got started and set up? Well, um, advice and planning documents, information about what, how they go about getting their insurance. Well, sort of this is an idea of a group you might... Oh, just talk about that Broadway Coalition. We have met with Broadway Coalition. I wasn't at that one, but okay. several people met with Broadway. But maybe this is a good time to go back. We were exploring whether there, whether um, we could have a financial sponsor, a fiscal sponsor, a fiscal sponsor, rather than actually forming a, yet another nonprofit. Mm -hmm. But um, so we were shopping around looking, if we, might, and we could find one that really that but we can go back to that that's a good idea thank um, you uh i could put you in touch with pat james who ran through the pennsylvania horticultural society a tree tenders program which is very neighborhood based tree planting program she lives in haydenville she works for growth in northampton and that's a, of course another um local nonprofit that i helped to found that um it has gone through all the steps you have Mm. So I'd be happy to hook you up with Pat Thanks, and, answer, and answer questions. Pat from, Jane. Pat Jane. And answer questions if you have any about um, the experience they broke through the That's great. Okay, great. Well, thank you. It sounds like you guys are really busy, and it um, sounds really promising. Um, I, I think that we really should formalize this 
place at the table. I just think that it makes a lot of sense and when the mayor had so many questions that I felt like I couldn't answer about your organization, it just made me realize that um, during these meetings, having you here, you know, obviously you're not commissioners, but you know, having a, a, a more substantive time in every meeting to talk about coordinating the work just makes sense. Mm, so if you if you guys feel like you can fit that into your schedule, I'd like to make that a, a, a standard practice. Yes, I um, expressed to Rich now that we're more more official in some ways. This is a, now a priority to. Yeah. Either for me to be here or I think Susan so because you get to hear firsthand what oh, it's what great. we're doing and what our priorities are. And there's so many things the commission is doing. Yeah, so, well we're no. all we're all working toward the same goals. Yeah. So okay, great. Um uh, all right. With the time we have remaining on uh, in our agenda we would like to talk about Arbor Day. And Arbor Day, I'm really talking about Arbor Day activities that are not all happening on or near Arbor Day, but also that um, Saturday before Earth Day, April 22nd, where we're planning to do a planting. So just to summarize, we're doing our major planting for Arbor Day on the 22nd, the morning, starting at 8 or 9 a.m with the help of Northampton High School Environmental Club volunteers, I'd love to go to them and tell them affirmatively we're planting X number of trees in, in this location. So we're plant five trees on Bridge Street, right from the antique store. Great. Which day? Oh, wow. That's, That's great. That'll, oh, that'll have a big impact. Is it Friday or the Saturday? It's a Saturday one. I hope they're awake when they show yeah. up. Yeah. 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 And then, okay, so that's that's the planting piece, and you're gonna the city. Will your crew be there? And but you guys are not like pre digging holes or anything. Well, those those, those are B and B trees, so we might have to. Oh, the ground's really hard there, so yeah, in order to be successful and get the trees planted, I think we're probably gonna have to uh, do some kind of uh, preparation of some sort. Okay. Do leave some work for the kids. They oh, they'll want to. Work. They'll they'll want to do yeah, some of this work. heavy lifting. I mean, they're they're rearing to go. Um, how many of students? I, you know, Ten I'll have to go. I don't. You know, I would be happy if they came up with five to ten. Is um, it possible to dig out the holes and at least replace the crap that's in there with good topsoil? Yeah. And yeah. then have them dig that up. <laughs> oh, God. oh, busy work. I'm but, operating no, no, but, speaking, that's a waste of my time. Yeah, no, but at least have a giant pile of good stuff. No, we would probably just, there's a very limited place to dump things, so we have to work out of the back of the truck. Okay. So we may, we may, we may excavate the hard pan that's there and get rid of it and then actually leave the, the material underneath for them to dig okay. off to the side and just make We've got to bag all the meters in the front there. Okay. So there's no vehicles parked there. You should bury like little surprises though. <laughs> you leave it. Geocache. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 You mean like a statue of St. Like Joseph a, upside like down? Or like a <laughs> iTunes, <laughs> iTunes gift cards. Um, th this just reminds me that as you guys are building your, your volunteer base, that there are sources like the high school environmental club, you know, that you you should be maybe proactively reaching out to because I think they're a great source mm -hmm. for, you know, the heavy lifting. And key club and... Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so I'll email Gretchen about um, about the planting. Is it starting at 8 or 9? I think uh, we should probably start at 8. About how long do you think the whole thing will take? Four hours probably. I'm going to take that. I'm gonna take, the trees are going to be there. And we can have a couple of different groups if you can how many students you have. We have two groups at a time. Okay. You know, one group taking all of it, which is falling behind and filming, putting the trees in. There's a lot of preparation. Yeah. You know, you're to take the wire baskets off, you know, you take the pearl lap off. When the trees will be there, we'll bring them down the day before. And we'll do all the prep work the day before. It's kind of actually good that this is not the same day as Arbor Day. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a relief. I don't think I'd be able mm -hmm. to do five trees of that size on Arbor Day because they're being beat. What's and Burlap? Yeah. Do we have uh, do we have leaders to help these kids or is it just your crew? It's gonna be myself and right now Tony. Okay. Two, two arborists and then uh, 
they want us to volunteer their time. I just think it would be valuable if you pulled all the kids aside and talked to them about yep. the proper way of planting a tree. Because yep. I, I would love for them to learn, you know, from this and really know yep. your There is an education piece of it, that's for sure. Okay, great. Um, so uh, should I reference this in our op-ed piece that I, the yep. kids from the high school? Yep. So are you wanting other people from the commission to come too? Or just you more and Tony? Than, no, they're more than welcome to come. Yeah. Right? More than merrier. Yeah, you're welcome to come. I don't have an issue with that. Right. Uh, but you don't you don't need people, but you'd love to have people come if they want. I think we could use educators for oh. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I might build I might build mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a fun thing. thing. I'll be at the sign up for sure. And the reason I would like to stay and do it on public property in the right way, I think, because of the red tape factor with the high school. Mm -hmm. Really, just not. I, I think we need to. We need to think about how. I guess I need to think about in, how internally we can actually communicate with the school department about planting more trees on school property mm -hmm. in, instead of just. I think as a whole. So I think it's going to be easier than, you know, now we don't want the, we don't want the trees there. They're in the way. We're going to have to mow around them, but, you know. Mm -hmm. So are we in the public right away? They really, there's, it's a no-brainer. So it's Yeah, easier. I mean, I, I, I'm in favor of getting that conversation started a year in advance. Because well, there's a few other internal conversations going on that may help the situation. I can't really get into it. All, so. Okay. All right. I'll trust you on that. Okay. All, all the, the other piece of Arbor Day the op-ed piece talked about. And then the third one is the whip distribution. It sounds like you guys have that covered volunteer-wise and, and your crew too, Rich, right? The other thing we didn't talk about was uh, we need to do a press release. We need to draft a press release like we did last year okay. and report it to the mayor. Yeah. And review and additions and comments. And then the mayor's office released it. Well, if our op-ed piece is going out uh, the 24th, I'll, I'll just tie it into submitting the op-ed piece. So I'll, I'll, yeah, when I'm drafting the op-ed piece, I'll also draft a press release. And this is just related to the activities that are going on. Okay. Do you want it to be um, before April 22nd planting? Probably would be probably the sooner the better because as we learned last year, sometimes it takes a, a few days for it to filter through the mayor's office. So we could okay. probably do it sooner or later if possible. Uh -huh. okay. Maybe already have a somewhat of a draft I from do. last year. Yep. You know that you could mm -hmm. utilize as your framework. Okay. So I'll shoot to actually get that to the mayor's office say, by say April fifteenth. Yes. Okay. Because the mayor will also issue a proclamation as well. Right. Is that happening at the April 20th council meeting? That will most likely happen then. I, I actually will call the mayor's office tomorrow to find out. Okay. Are the troops going to be distributed on the 22nd or the 29th? Oh, the 20th and 20th. 20th and 20th. <clears throat> so, Lily, just because I had volunteered to oversee the Arbor Day events, um, I've been in touch with Sue. Uh, for the tree work, the tree work distribution, so they've completely filled those slots. Yeah. Um, so it's eight to noon on uh, Saturday and eight to three on Friday. Nice. And I understand this this five types of trees. Sorry. Five types of trees. Yes. Yeah. Um, excuse me. We have eight to three on Friday. Yes. And oh. Eight to noon on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yep. And along with the whips are paper um, descriptions of the trees. Wonderful. I'm hoping that uh, Rich will also give us a few handouts about watering, you know, some of the door hangers. Mm -hmm. So he's going to bring door hangers those along. And we'll actually probably uh, have some of the other um, hang not hangers, but they were. Uh, you're talking about the water bag hangers? Yeah, there, there, there were the, there the were permanent the, plastic ones? There were the permanent plastic ones, and then we also had the door hangers that we actually were putting on people's doors when we were planting trees yes. in the public right away. Yes. Um, so you have the combination, you have two blitzes in a sense if you can't make contact with the homeowner. Yeah. But hand them out yeah. to folks would be fine. We have plenty of them. 
The d you're talking about the door hangers. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I don't think we want to hang out the plastic. No, the plastic yeah. ones were pretty expensive. Yeah. The door hangers, I think, we would find the, the setback planting door hangers as well that we have, so we can, you know, kind of distribute those and whatever other leaf, leaf material that you're not having. Yeah. We did a. We also did a um, proper mulching one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would be another group. What about pruning? Would we don't have a pruning one. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want that. No, that's a little more, a little yeah. more complicated. Yeah. I think you want to hang yeah. stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. We're not sure we want the public to right. be doing the pruning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about like their own tree whips that they're growing. They buy tree whips. Well, I know, but it is still yeah. it's, it's something that they do have to think about. Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure we end this meeting on time. Um, so I think that we've covered the uh, highlights of Arbor Day planning. I want to remind you I will not be at the next meeting, which is going to be our last meeting before Arbor Day. So Todd will be chairing the meeting, and any last-minute details can be worked out at that time. Uh, To-do list. Recap. I don't have too many, so if I missed anything, let me know. Uh, Rich is going to provide East Hampton with a copy of the grant proposal tree inventory. Um, there's a tree hearing coming up on April 12th at 5 p.m. 83 Grove Ave. Um, and then we have the Arbor Day events. So Lily's working on our bed piece, wrapping up press release to that. And then on April 22nd, which is doing five tree plantings on Bridge Street with the High School Environmental Club and Tree Northampton is overseeing the whip distribution with your volunteer corps on Friday the 28th and Saturday the 29th. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I forgot yeah. to mention, um, this was in today's paper, you should look at it. This is a uh, tree planting to honor John Masante, who was the town manager who died abruptly in Amherst. Mm -hmm. And um, and they're wrapping it into our. They're, they actually Amherst has Arbor Month, which I think is really cool. Wow! Yeah. So look for this in today's Gazette, or you can briefly look at it before you leave. Yeah. Todd, do you have one more comment? Oh, so it, it, it'd be helpful uh, if Rich could get a ballpark figure of creating a new tree well cost. Can I uh, actually probably with, with structural as well? Yeah. I'll probably pull that from uh, the Pleasant Street. Project yeah. is actually mm -hmm. uh, kind of tough to bid, or actually is is an award. But does that so that in, that's like prevailing wage and blah blah. It's not that's not presuming like volunteer labor or anything. That's what you have. But in, in order to contract with an individual, you have to pick prevailing wage. Okay. So that would be an accurate reflection of what it would cost. So in other words, we would never, we could not see ourselves doing it ourselves. No. Yeah, you're talking about pulling up concrete. Okay. Stuff. And you got it. You got to compact it too. Oh, so I've got it. All right. So it's a real right. professional. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. No, I just one other quick thought was um, I've had people ask me what are those green things that are around the trees. So it, for Arbor Day, it may just not for handing out the whips. You could just have one out there with a little green. sign. What is this thing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people kind of. Oh, you know about the water bath? Yeah, I oh. had a lot of people yeah. ask me. There was some very oh. interesting ideas, but they okay. were. So, uh, you know, just to give people information. What is all, what are these green right. cones everywhere? And also just information that, that they are, that the city is actually filling them yeah. on a regular basis. Although we welcome other people to fill them too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like houses for squirrels. Motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.